As we look at our past, we can only wonder of the people who lived before us. Fleeting images, distant memories, they provide clues to lives once lived. It was 1940. Like most wars, it was a time of apprehension and uncertainty. The students of La Crosse Teachers College were preparing for an uncertain future. There was Lois Williamson from Racine. She was in the band, a member of Sigma Lambda Sigma and part of the Women's Recreational Association. Paul Hassett from Milwaukee was the editor-in-chief of The Racket. He was vice president of Beta Sigma Chi. Soon he would enlist in the Air Force. And then there was Harris Stewart from West Dallas, all conference football player and a member of Phi Kappa Epsilon. He would become the first lacrosse student lost to the war. Words, memories, and letters, all weaving a story, a story so that we might connect with them. It started with Pearl Harbor. Certainly very interesting times for my mother. She graduated, uh, she, she met my father, Pearl Harbor took place, the war began, and, uh, and then shortly after that, my father enlisted in the, uh, in the military to, to serve his country. It must have been absolutely tumultuous times. Uh, and then of course, uh, I was born right in the, in the mix of things. My, my mother's first connection uh, to La Crosse was really to come here uh, to UWL. Uh, she came from a, a family that uh, none of the family members uh, went to college. Uh, some of them uh, didn't finish high school. She was one of, of 10 children. So it was a, it was a wonderful opportunity for uh, my mother and then spent four years here at UWL and graduated with a major in physical education. I think she knew at the time that this was an incredible opportunity for her to, uh, to get an education, uh, to uh, get out of, of Chicago, and uh, she, uh, she loved it here from the, I think, the first day she was here. She, 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 she liked the university, she liked her professors, she liked her, her fellow students, and uh, she really fell in love with the, with the community. I, I have heard a little bit about the story of, of, uh, of going back to Chicago on the train. Yeah, she didn't go back to Chicago that often, uh, and uh, this apparently was a, a very memorable uh, occasion. It was very much a, fe a feeling of what a war we were in and how serious it was. And we wondered if there were other people on that, in that coach that were war people or affected in some way had someone in the service. The, uh, uh, the lights were off of the train at, at night and... Uh, and we started singing hymns and, and Christmas songs. Yes, it was, we just sang and, and no one said anything and no one talked. And it was dark and, and, and the train, it, it, it was really a memory. passengers found this all very very reassuring and and, uh, and started singing along and humming along with them and, and it turned out to be uh, something that was really uh, imprinted in her memory this 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 night train ride back to Chicago my father was in charge of a, of, of a hospital uh, train that would uh, be uh, sent up to the front lines to collect uh, wounded soldiers uh, and my father would uh, uh, do operations on the most severely wounded soldiers, uh, and uh, at times, the, even though the train was uh, was clearly marked with a red cross on it, it would to be routinely strafed and, and, and bombed. Uh, and uh, so it was a, a dangerous, dangerous operation. One of the items that I have that I personally treasure uh, is this is this little billfold that uh, my father uh, took to war with him. It uh, 
It, and he carried this every day in his, in his shirt pocket, you know, right above his, his heart. And it was, it was important to him uh, to be able to, to remember his family he, uh, he left behind, a family of, uh, of, of a soldier who was overseas, and, and my mother not knowing if he was coming back or not. As the war continued, more students from La Crosse were sent overseas. Back home, a history teacher from campus took a deep interest in their lives. Myrtle Trowbridge would begin corresponding to GIs and, and her letters would lift their morale and the stories from the students would warm her heart. I cherished the moments I wrote to the boys fighting in the war. I felt a special bond with each of them. Those students, my boys, meant a lot to me, and my letters gave me a chance to brighten their long, hard days and to let them know we were thinking about them. Miss Trowbridge, I want to thank you for writing because your letters give one a shot in the arm. I don't believe that we boys who you have been writing to over here will ever be able to repay you for writing us. The countryside over here is much like that of Wisconsin with its valleys and hills and green fields but it can never take the place of Wisconsin in my heart. The ending of the war here has a peculiar effect on us. For years, we have planned on how we'd celebrate that day. And yet when it came, it was just another day. Sincerely, Robert Paulson. My dear Miss Trollbridge, just look up to the North Star and down the other side and you'll find me. But look hard, for I'm in a hot, wet valley at the government's expense. Life is a bit rugged, like camping out. Hope you are in fine health. I received my last letters, which helped my morale. Regards, Lieutenant Paul Hassett, 9th Combat Cargo Squadron. November 29th, 1944. Dear Miss Trowbridge, I received two racket issues about homecoming and from what I read, festivities went over very well. Can't you just picture the homecoming after the war is over? I must say aloha for now, and here's wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Sincerely, Lieutenant W.F. Lushine. One boy I remember was Jack Finley. It was August of 43, in the middle of the war. As I wrote, I felt I was slowly losing contact with him, but still, I wrote, Dear Jack, My suspicions are that you are somewhere I have always wanted to go. Make the most of your free time and store up all the sights so that you can tell me about them when you return. September 25th, 1943. Dear Jack, The Scarlet of the Maples and the dazzling yellow of the birches challenge the sumacs, goldenrods, daisies, and asters of many hues. Brown-eyed Susans and thistles, lightened by the Queen Anne's lace, form a tapestry that no French designer has ever approached. Across the fields, shocks of brown corn stalks and the last of alfalfa suggests summer is waning but more definite harbingers of winter are the crisp air and the flocking birds. Only the hawks, as they circle high over the ridges, seem oblivious of any approaching change in the daily routine. Now take care, Jack. Affectionately, Myrtle Trowbridge. It was the letters that kept Jack and the rest of the boys alive in my memory. It was their connection to La Crosse and their connection with me that made all the difference in the world. Those boys meant the world to me. They always will.